My name is Richard. I work on the PyTorch team at Meta. And today I'll be talking about custom operators in PyTorch. So let's start with some definitions. Um, so a kernel is a function that performs a computation using some raw data pointers. Uh, some examples of this are you might have a, write a critter kernel that takes in some data pointers, does some comp compute with a tensor on a GPU. You might write a custom C or C++ kernel that takes in a tensor's data pointer and does some manipulation on the data there. You can have a kernel in Python. Like there are some libraries that are basically Python bindings to C++ libraries that do these tensor data manipulations. Like NumPy is an example. Another example is the Python pill library. Uh, the third type of kernels that we'll talk about in this talk today are Trident kernels. Um, Trident is a Python DSL where you can just write a Trident kernel and then it compiles down to a CUDA kernel. A lot of people want to write uh, PyTorch kernels. Um, a lot of people want to write kernels and bring them to PyTorch because PyTorch has like a really large set of built-in operations, but to really like control the performance of your hardware, you might want to actually write a kernel to do so. So that's kernels. Uh, now I want to talk about operators. These are slightly different from kernels, but like there's a bit of nuance there. An operator is some glue code that PyTorch, uh, that tells PyTorch about a computation and that calls one or more kernels to actually do the computation. The glue code is, allows the custom operator with its kernels to actually work with PyTorch subsystems like torch.compile, torch export, autograd, and so on. In particular, torch compile. Like if you're writing a custom kernel, it's a bit difficult to get it to actually work with torch compile. So given your kernel types, like you might write a C++ CUDA kernel. If you do so, we have a C++ API to register it as a custom operator. It's called Torch Library. Um, if you write a Python kernel, let, uh, we have this API called Torch Library Custom Op to, write a, to wrap your kernel into a custom operator. Trident kernels are a special case. We'll talk about them at the end of this presentation. So I want to go through the three types of custom operators and just show like, how to actually use them. So let's talk about the Python API first. Uh, let's say you have some third party library that's, uh, that's calling into the pillow crop operation. You've got a crop function, it takes your tensor, turns it into a pillow image, calls crop, puts it back into the torch tensor. And so you've got a function, this is not a custom operator, this does not work with torch.compile or autograd or anything else currently. So to turn it into a custom operator, you just need to add a decorator. Decorator, just uh, you attach this torch library custom op decorator to your function, and boom, it's a custom operator. You have to add three more things to actually make this work. All custom ops in PyTorch need a name. That's the mylib crop. Uh, you need to tell us what inputs the custom operator mutates. That's important for actually interfacing with PyTorch subsystems. And the last thing you needed to tell us was that you need to add uh, type annotations to the crop function. You need to tell us what it accepts, a tensor and uh, a box in this case, and what it returns, which is a tensor. I guess the saturation's not that good, so you'll just have to believe me on this. Uh, you can download the slides from the website after the talk as well, if that helps. So to use a custom op with torch.compile, you have to write what is known as a metakernel. The way torch.compile works is that it takes a Python function and it does graph capture on the Python function to produce a graph. In order to do this graph capture, Torsha compile runs through your function without real tensors. It runs through your function with these dummy fake tensors. Uh, the fake tensors are basically regular tensors, but they have no data. So to get a custom op to work with PyTorch, you need to tell us, like given a dummy tensor with some shape, how do you create a dummy tensor with the correct output shape? So using the Torch library register fake API, you can tell us that uh, you can give us that registration for a given custom operator. So that was how to get a custom operator to work with torch.compile. Next question we have here is how do you get a custom operator to work with autograd? And there's like two different ways to do this. Like traditionally, like you can write a torch.autograd.function in Python to specify what the forward and the backward like of your custom operator is. We've actually introduced a new API called torch.library.registerAutograd where you, uh, given a custom operator, you also just tell us what the forward and the backward are. Uh, register autograd takes in two things. It takes in a function like that sets up the context 
object so that you can save things for backward, and also takes in a backward function, which describes like given the backward, uh, given the gradients, and given the context you saved, how do you actually execute? How do you actually perform the backward pass? In general, like you can use both autograd function and torch library re uh, register autograd. Uh, when you want to compose this with torch compile, uh, torch autograd function shows some composability limitations. Register autograd works better with torch compile. Furthermore, like torch autograd function runs us into some weird silent incorrectness cases from time to time that are pretty hard, difficult to fix in the PyTorch uh, framework. So in general, we recommend that you use register autograd if you're defining an autograd formula for a custom operator. So I went through Python custom operators uh, using the Torch library custom op API. There is a C++ API if you want to register a custom operator in C++. So let's say you had this prop operation. Can, can we see the screen? No, I don't think so. Let's say you had a prop operation in C++ and you wanted to use um, register as a custom operator, there is a similar API in C++ called Torch Library that you can use to register as a custom operator. So note, like, your kernels might be written in C++. You can either register a custom operator for them in Python using Torch Library custom, uh, using the Torch Library custom op, or in C++ using Torch Library. It's really up to you and what you find uh, easier in that case. Um, the last thing I want to talk about are user-defined Trident kernels. So you can just write a Trident kernel. Uh, like, picture on the screen is an ad kernel. Um, ad cur like, tri the Trident ad kernel tutorial uh, online. Um, you can write a Trident kernel, and uh, it will just work with Torch compile out of the box. There's no reason, there's, there's, there's no reason to actually wrap a user-defined Trident kernel in a custom operator. So a recommendation for Trident kernels is a little flip. Like if you have a Trident kernel, you can just put it in a, t in a uh, you can just use it directly. You don't, you don't need to put a custom operator decorator around a Trident kernel. So Trident kernel, like it works in eager mode. It supports Torch compile in most cases. Uh, there are some where it doesn't. And it does not compose with like autograd or tensor subclasses and so on. But if you do want that full composition, you can just slap a custom op decorator on top of the Trident kernel. So in conclusion, uh, there's a couple of takeaways I want you guys to take from this talk. If you have a custom kernel, uh, that's either Python, C++, or CUDA, like, we would really prefer you to write a custom operator, especially if you're writing a library, if you're authoring a library full of custom ops. It's just easier for the next person to come along to like see this operator instead of a raw kernel. That's for regular custom operators. If you have a Trident, uh, a Trident kernel, the recommendation is flipped. Uh, User-defined Trident kernels work out of the box of Torch compile, and you should actually try to use Trident kernels instead of a Creator kernel when you can. The Trident kernels are really hackable, and you can also get really good performance, like uh, CUDA kernel level performance, without even needing to touch C++. All right, that's the talk. Uh, thanks everyone for being here. I'll be here for like a couple of minutes if you guys have questions.